Hey guys, it's Ace from the Install Bay. We're gonna talk about base blockers and when to use them. So stay tuned. A common problem we run into in the 12 volt world is in cars that have a small speaker in the dash, a big speaker in the door, and they're both on the front channels of the radio. Then you add a radio or you add an amp or you wanna replace them. In any situation, you have to cross over for the smallest speaker which would be the three and a half. And there's no reason why you'd want to cross a six by nine over as a three and a half. What would be the point? So for that situation, you need things like base blockers. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna show you, for one, what a base blocker is, and two, what it's actually doing to the speaker. So let's get started. So what we have set up here today in our little experiment is a radio, and we have a set, a, we have a three and a half, and we have a six by nine. Now this is going to be probably the most common scenario that we run into. A lot of your Chryslers, some of your Hondas and Kias, they have a small 3.5 in the dash and they have a bigger 6x9 in the door. So they're both going to be powered off of the front output of this radio. Right now they're both running full range, meaning this, this speaker and this speaker are getting the exact same signal. That could be a problem because obviously this speaker is going to play a lot more mid-bass than this one. So if you go to turn on your crossover in the radio to correct for that, you have to put it at a much higher frequency to compensate for the fact that this is tiny. Now, we don't want that because there again, we want to make sure this can play the deeper bass it's supposed to, but this one can't. So that's where these guys come in. These are your bass blockers. You can buy something like this that comes pre-packaged and on the back, it'll tell you basically what size speaker it's for. Or if you'd like to take matters in your own hands, you can buy these. These are just regular capacitors, non-polar, meaning they don't have a positive and a negative. They go either direction. And there's a number on them, like this one is an A47. This one is an A99. And this little guy here is a little 3.3. .3. These numbers all correspond to crossover points. And there's a chart that you can use to figure out what frequency you would like and what size capacitor you could buy. The smaller the number, the higher the crossover point. So something like the 3.3 .3 would be good for a tweeter, whereas the 99 would be better for a mid-range like the 6x9. So when I'm going to put one of these things in, there's a couple different ways I can do it. First off, I like to take and strip off some wire sheeting from a just a regular remote turn on wire and then what I like to do is slide it on like this now this is going to cover up that cool naked wire and it's a lot thicker than just using heat shrink so what you end up with is something that looks like this now from these ends you can twist your wire on and solder them and be done and then you can take some nice shrink wrap like this which is really big slide this over and you've covered the whole thing. And essentially what you've made is what you're buying here. So in this case, we've made quick disconnects to make it easier to film. So to hook up a capacitor, what you want to do is hook it up to the positive side of the speaker. So we just plug this guy in here. And we're done. The crossover will now be active on the speaker. So we have both of these playing the exact same sound right now. Three and a half, six by nine. Let's go ahead and add in the base blocker. First we're going to do the tweeter one. We'll turn it up a little bit to show you. Now as you can see it's centered more towards this side of the frequency response which is mainly treble and if you notice the slope is very gradual that's because these are 6 dB not 12, 18 or 24 those numbers correspond to that slope and how steep it is caps are just a 6 dB so the slope is going to be extremely gradual now at volume it's only allowing it to play down to 1000 Hertz which is clearly not far enough down for a three and a half. So let's go ahead and swap it out for the bigger capacitor. So 
So immediately you'll see that it's playing well past 1000 Hz. It's actually starting its roll off at 1000 Hz. So as we turn it up. So you can see now that it's playing further down into the mid range and you're going to get that sound out of it. So now if you wanted to add a high pass crossover just to stop the 6x9 from playing deep bass because you have a subwoofer, you can do that and not have to worry about your 3.5 blowing because it's trying to keep up with the 6x9. Now we do have the bigger capacitor which is made for a 6x9 so let's go ahead and put that in and see what that looks like. So now you can see that the 6x9 is actively high pass crossed over so it's not going to play into your subwoofer. This is actively crossed over so it's not competing against the 6x9 to play deeper frequencies that it can't play. Alright guys, so we hope you understand what bass blockers are and the benefits of what they can do for you a little bit better now than you did before. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Please subscribe. Hey, why not? Uh, if you want to know more about us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and right here on YouTube. As usual, you guys have a great night, and we will see you later next time. Bye.